All right, we have all of our tools installed now, so let's take first look at our MVC project. And in the process, we can take a look at the different files that an MVC project consists of. So we'll start with a new project, and we want it to be a web project. And you'll note that there's only one choice, and that would be an ASP.NET web application. After we select this, there'll be further choices to allow us to do an MVC project. So we'll call our project Hello and say OK. And now here are our choices. We're going to use a couple of these, and I'll describe some of them in a future lesson. But for now, we're going to select the MVC project. And that will build up an infrastructure and some sample forms for us. When we say OK to that, the project is built. The first thing they do is give you a README HTML page. That's not actually useful for the project, but it does tell you what's in the application. The most important part is over here in Solution Explorer. And I'm going to start with the views. If you remember, the view presents our user interface. In our home view, you would expect to be a home page. And our index is going to be our default page. So I'm just going to select that so we can take a look at what this website looks like right out of the box. So they've given us a lot to work with, none of it's particularly useful for our purposes, but there are a couple of things that are interesting. It does give us a menu, and also a register and a login page. And those have some interesting code behind we can use as frameworks to start with. So now that we've seen briefly what that actually looks like, let's take a look at the files that consist of the model view and controller. This is the view file, and as you can see, it looks primarily like HTML. There are, however, some differences. You can see the at symbol, and that indicates that there's going to be a razor statement. So this viewbag.title equal to home page is a razor statement as opposed to HTML. Our controllers are in a separate folder, and naming convention is really important in MVC. So please do remember to keep your controller names consistent with your routing and your view names. This is the home controller, and the most important thing about this is the action result for index. Our view is actually named index, so when we put in a request, we're actually asking for the action result method called index, and that's going to return a view. This is where the naming convention kind of glues those two things together. And in this case, our view doesn't have any data, so it just returns the view, period. In a more typical controller, this action result would probably get some model data and return that within the view, so that the view would have some data to work with. But this is the rough equivalent of a static HTML page. You'll see that there are some, also some other action results, and these reflect some of the menu items that were also on that page. There was an About screen and a Contact. And you can see that the code sets a message property on the view bag. The view bag is similar to a view state in ASP.NET. So the view can look at any kind of properties that are put in the view bag. So let's take a look at our models folder. Now, as you might have guessed, our home page doesn't have a model because there wasn't any data there, but our account page does. And the model classes are typically very simple storage classes. So in this model, for instance, there's only a username. And as you can see, there's not really any code doing any particular work. It's just storage classes. I might also quibble a bit that they have more than one class in a file. It's not necessarily a good form in all organizations, but that's the way Microsoft has put it together. So these are what the model, view, and controller classes look like. There's one more really important part in Microsoft's MVC, and that's the routing config. That's in under app start and the route config.cs file. This is a glue piece that tells the application how URLs map to various controllers and their action methods. So in this case, our default route maps to a controller in action and passes in an ID parameter. That controller name is home and the action is index. Our ID parameter is optional. In fact, it isn't used in this case. So what that is saying is that for the default page of this website, go to the home controller and call its index action method. If you remember, our home controller looks like that and does indeed have an index method. So that routing is really important. It allows you to map URLs to controllers and to their action methods. So that's a brief introduction to the environment. In the future, we'll be creating our own content and our own projects.